Hello and welcome to the Soundwave Podcast, music, technology, stories for people who love the art and science of listening to and enjoying recorded sound. Here, it's all about the art and magic of sound reproduction and the related human stories. We survey music, technology, and stories from the early beginnings of relatively low high fidelity to the heyday of the 70s high fidelity and the modern age of digital and streaming. I'm your host, Pat Shepard. How do you get into the business of recording audiobooks? What do you do to prepare for the recording process? Practice, research, etc. What do you do to make the text come alive? What does a typical home recording studio look like? What are some best practices? For these questions and more, stay tuned for today's podcast. I really started listening to audiobooks a few years ago. Before COVID, I did a fair amount of travel, and audiobooks were a big boon, making travel time more me time. Now, I have more opportunity to pop in my Apple AirPod Pros, crank up my Audible app, and get some reading done, more so than I do to sit down and actually read books. Don't get me wrong. I love the process of reading books as much as I do listening to analog audio, you know, vinyl records and tapes. Listening to a good audiobook makes drive time more productive and is my reward for rolling up my sleeves and getting some dishes done or other tasks. So, I love audiobooks, and I'm really lucky to have actress Olivia Belfi here to talk about the inside Inside story story. to recording audiobooks. Olivia, can you please introduce yourself and what got you into recording audiobooks and some of the work that you've done? Hi, Pat. Thanks for having me on the show, first of all. And um, I started getting into audiobooks because um, they talked about it at university. I went to a musical theater department, and this man who was a financial planner come in to talk to us, and he talked about Jeff Daniels' son, Luke Daniels, who I don't know if you know this, but he is an extremely successful audiobook narrator. He couldn't find success in acting. Well, not traditional success um, of being famous, but he is extremely um, popular in the audiobook world. So that's how I kind of got started with it. And it's been a lovely journey ever since. Did COVID have anything to do with that? Because I know that you have been doing other kinds of acting outside of voice actress. Um, So did COVID Mm kind of bring that about? Yeah. So, I mean... You couldn't do any theater. There was no live theater. And that was my main bread and butter. I was traveling around the country doing, I mean, the live theater is the best. It's so fun. But audiobooks allow you to work anywhere. You can be really anywhere with your little recording studio. I have a mobile one and one that stays put. And I plan on doing this because um, the rights you get paid for the next seven years, which most people don't know that. Um, that's if you're independently Sweet. producing. Sweet. You, we'll have to get into that a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I was wondering, since you've done uh, singing and actressing, would you like to uh, take a moment out and just whip out a jingle for me for the show? <laughs> okay. Me, me, me. <laughs> this is the Soundwave Show. Yo. <laughs> All right. That works. A little Thank jazzy. You. Yeah. I like it. What do you do to prepare for the recording process? In other words, you know, let's say you get booked to do something. How much practice, additional research, what do you do to prepare for the process? So it depends on what kind of book I get. I have been blessed to read a lot of books that I have known literally nothing about. I knew nothing about bitcoins or cryptocurrency, which comes a lot with the jargon that you don't know. And so it's an opportunity to look up words. I'm constantly having to look up how things are pronounced. That's more throughout the process because you can't read a 600 page book. I go from the front cover to the back cover, just like a reader would pretty much. But if there's character research, as in like um, people with accents or Um, like an evil stepmother, for example, I did a book with an evil stepmother and I had to develop the voice. So that came with research and you just, I watch YouTube videos. I listen to accents on YouTube. Interesting. And tell me, um, what, give me an idea. I know you've done a lot of audio books. Give me a sense Mm -hmm. of how many have you done and what types and where can people go get these audio books? 
Sure. I think I've got like 15 now on Audible. Um, and it's also through Audible. Uh, if you wanted to be a narrator yourself, you go through a website called ACX, which is also through Amazon. And that's where the authors are connected with the actors, really. And I've done books from how-to books to, you know, books about medicinal plants to books about, you know, a modern Cinderella story. So I really auditioned for a lot of range. I, I recently did an economics textbook, which I thought was going to be so boring, but really was so captivating. So what do you do to make the text come alive? Uh, you, you've talked about you research maybe some of the, um, well, for something like an economics book, I don't suppose there's an awful lot of accent that you have to develop, but what do you do to make the text come to life in general? Yeah, so I realized very quickly that with a six, seven hour audiobook, the time you put into it to get the final product that you hear is probably four to five hours for every hour of audio. So you don't think about that when you're listening to books. And I always liked audiobooks as well. And when I realized I was going to be spending so much time on one book, I realized I better pick topics that I like or I'm interested in. So it's not hard to, um, talk about these books and read in the author's point of view because I'm already interested. So I just use my own interest to fuel that. But it's different tones. Like, for example, for the economics book, um, my tone would be more like um, the title was Naked Economics. Um, Naked Economics, Undressing the Dismal Science. You know, so it's very calming, soothing, you know, where other books are more my voice and I put my own cork, quirky spin on it. it. It really depends on each title. And what is the recording setup that you use? In other words, have you gone into an actual recording studio to do these and, and what goes on in the control room? Or it sounds to me like you just have a mobile uh, setup that you can do right at home. So you don't need to go to a recording studio. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so my recording studio is by no means, um, well, it is professional because my recordings sound professional, but honestly, it's a big cardboard box with mattress foam inside it. <laughs> um, I'm going to be honest, like, and no one would ever know. No That's one would incredible. ever know. And my mic is a, it's a good stereo, uh, a good stereo mic, but it's not top of, top of the line, top of the line. I found that the top of the line ones it's really hard to get the noise out of the background. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, my recording studio is this. I would like to go to recording studio one day or even have one in my own house with the glass walls and the soundproof paneling. But in that situation, you usually have to have a producer editing your tracks. And there's, so there's two different kinds of audiobook production. There's independent production, which is what I'm doing one person doing everything, all the computer stuff, all the acting. And then there's big audio houses. Like there's one in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where a lot of the big audio productions, they have actors brought in and are paid like a nine to five salary job to read there. So what do you do in terms of takes? What, what's your approach yeah. to takes? Well, I've at first I started by trying to get through as much as I could, and that fails because with different characters talking, you have to get the pausing right. And like, for example, my one book I just did, I had an evil stepmother, and she sounded like this: "Oh, Hazel, you are terrible. Sweep the floors." Right? That was a stepmother. And then the princess character was, "Oh, mother, I just don't know what to do. I'm so." Poor and I just want to eat some cream and jam, you know? And when you have those two people talking, it's really hard to go simultaneously. So when I make a mistake, I clap. And when you clap, you see the spike in the recording. So I actually continuously record and I go chapter by chapter. What do you use to edit your uh, your book? Because that I know from doing yeah. the podcast that that takes a lot of work, that editing. What do you use to do that Ooh. editing? Well, one day I would like to use Logic. Um, but for now, I'm just using GarageBand. And honestly, it's working very nice. So what are some of the best practices, Olivia? Sure. Well, first is I'd say patience because it's a very big learning curve. I did my first book a year ago, but I haven't really seen monetary gains till now. Because I just wasn't picking the right books. You have to make sure they're low on the sales rank on Amazon. 
so that your work will be seen by people. And um, really just, if you're a book lover, this is for you. If you like to read, why not read and then, you know, have your work on Amazon too and Audible and iTunes because once you do an Audible book, it goes to all those platforms automatically. Nice. And are there other people competing to record the same book? In other words, are Ooh, you, yeah. are there, okay, but once you've won the rights to read that book, is someone else also reading that book and you have five different people reading the same book or does it only <laughs> go to, to the winner as it were? It's the winner. So on ACX, you see there's at least 200, 300 books per day that pop up that independent authors all over are trying to get a narrator and you search. So every day I search through just skimming to see if there's any low on the sales rank. The lower the sales rank, the more money you'll make, the higher the sales. So I try to find those books and I audition. Um, Of course, I would say right now in my queue, I'd say I have like 70 auditions that I've done in the past three months or something, but they're short, but I have only booked 10 of those books. So it's, you, it's a lot of auditioning work and you, there's no way to tell because everyone's like me in their home studio around the world and completely around the world, because a lot of the books aren't even written in English. So (laughs) I know the span, there's a lot of Spanish books, there's French books, so it's a very wide variety. And what is the most fun you've had recording a book? What's the most fun recording you've ever done? Probably the one I just did about, it was, um, it's called Against All Odds. And this one's on Audible as well. And um, it's, they were all British accents and variations of Cockney. And I just think that's so fun. The cook... Oh, she, she was literally called Cook. The name of the character of, you know, the kitchen lady was Cook. And she kind of had this voice like this. And she was, I'm going to make you a loaf of bread, you know. And I love doing the voices. That's the best part. Because with these big mics that pick up everything, you really do sound like a different person. Have you thought that before in an audiobook? Oh, my gosh. Is that the same person talking? Because I yeah. have. yeah they bring it to life. And that was kind of one of my Mm -hmm. earlier questions. Some people can just really bring a book to life. and You almost feel like you're in a one person's show. I know. And to keep it all straight, even (laughs) as a person reading it, it's so hard. I have to write myself notes throughout about what each person sounds like and how to keep it consistent because what you're thinking in your head isn't always what it sounds like. Because again, the high powered mic picks things up differently. So let's say I'm doing a voice of like a lot of my male protagonists sound the same because I don't have a low voice. So I'm like, okay, this is my romantic male. And he kind of sounds like this, like, hey, how is everyone doing? You know, very as low as I can go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> hey, hey, so hey you want to go to, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that voice I have locked in now. I know that that is one of my archetype voices that I to can go, go to, to like this. To go to. Yes. But it's not always like that. And that's the point. You you can't Mm -hmm. do these things without that that kind of experience. And and you as you do more of these, you even gain more experience. So it's um you you know, you bring that perpetually forward to each work that you do. And so starting out, you know, you're not gonna be at that level, but as you've gotten into it and and perfected your art, your craft, uh, you're able to do that better. Yeah, yeah. It's just practice, really. Nice. And what is the worst experience you've ever had? A book that I accepted that was six hours long and it was almost all written in computer code, which I have no idea what computer code is. I don't know how to read it. Um, It was a huge learning curve just because there was no way this book was going to explain to me what all the code meant. (laughs) It didn't sell much. Let's just say that. Did you read it in a computer voice? This does not compute. It does not parentheses dot yes. zero <laughs> dot zero zero parentheses. Right. It was like, I got so good at bracket. saying the word parentheses in bracket. Yes. Yeah, bracket. You forget <laughs> I'm in computers too. I know, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. And are there any amazing facts or observations that you'd like to close the interview with regarding, you know, audiobooks and 
your personal interaction with audiobooks and all that? I just think it's fun that you get to create a whole world for yourself and these characters. There's no director. It's just you. You know, it's one of the only forms of acting where you as the performer have all the control. It's actually, I would say, probably the only form of acting other than a one-person show. But even then, you have a director. You have people that are lighting you that have a, you know, a different perspective on how the show should look. But with an audiobook, it's just you, baby. It's all you. Yep. Nice. That's a good perspective. And uh, how much can can somebody doing what you're doing, how much can they look to maybe make? What is What kind of revenue does this generate for you or for somebody, you know, who's doing this? Yeah. So for me, it's been slow building up, but um, now I'm averaging about a thousand dollars or more on every book I read, which takes me about three to four days to complete now. But again, it's taken me a long time to work up to that. It takes, it's a learning curve, but um, the best people who are working in this industry are making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. wow. So it's a career option. It's a valid career option. Sure, sure. And it's a good, you know, side hustle or side job or whatever you might want to call it. It's a good way to keep income going on while they're or yeah. to practice or to stay in, with your hand in the acting world uh, as you do other things or whatever it might be. So that's that's a very, very good point. Oh, there's one more thing I want to add about, Please. you know, the insights. And it would be when you're recording and you're continuously recording you realize you make some weird noises and it's not even like, it's just, they're human sounds. But when you mess up, it's like, Oh, Oh no. But then you hear it back. <laughs> it's just funny. You, you never expect that because you do have to listen to yourself. Yeah. And a lot of people don't like hearing their own voice or at least are put off by hearing their own voice. And when I listen and edit this podcast, I'm like, oh, yeah. but you know, you just have to get over that. And I, that's a universal thing. There's so, you know, there's some people who doesn't, some people actually love their voice. I've heard people talking about how they actually enjoy hearing themselves, but most, <laughs> most of us listen and go, hmm. Okay, so, yeah. so you got to get over that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Olivia. I know I really appreciate this conversation. I think our listeners will. And how can people contact you if they want any services done? Do you have a website? And and please send me that and I'll post that on the soundwaveshow.com website. But where can people go to um, to book you to to see your work and all that? Sure. You can go to www.oliviabelfi.com. My first name, last name.com. It's my website. You can also look up my name on Audible. So everybody go out to oliviabelfi.com and check out the work she's done. I'm going to get the links from her and post them on my website as well. Of course, you can post your questions, thoughts, or comments as well. And of course, always subscribe and comment and like and all that other good stuff. And um, hope to see you on the next show. So again, thank you very much, Olivia. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so today we had a great discussion with Olivia Belfi, all about some behind-the-scenes stories, recording audiobooks. So be sure to visit my website, thesoundwaveshow.com, and you can see links to her work, her books, her homepage. And you can comment on the show and leave suggestions for other episodes. I always welcome that. Come back for the next episode where we'll be having another inside story where we'll be talking to someone who runs a vintage audio repair shop. And we'll hear inside details about what to watch out for, some best practices and tips, and hopefully it'll be a very interesting show for everybody. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the Soundwave Show. All content, except where noted, is copyright Pat Shepard and the soundwaveshow.com. The theme song is something I put together in GarageBand. See you next time. <laughs>